don't know until you know. You see a mother struggling, the first thing that is allowed to come out of your mouth is, can I help you? Have this expectation of children that they should behave in a certain way. They have such big feelings and they cannot process them alone. And it was just like, what? If the people are dealing with this and not talking about it, but it's like the most important thing, oh, here we go. <laughs> Peace, beautiful beings. Welcome back. Today is an exciting, different type of video. I sat on a live Zoom call with my sister, Jordan, whose channel is Phoenix Wild. You may have seen some of her videos. Her YouTube channel is mainly about family and her life in Hawaii with her partner and her children. She talks about her pregnancy journeys and childbirth and is a really down-to-earth mama that has a lot of insights and is not afraid to tell it like it is. I I love her channel, so go and check it out. She is currently pregnant with her third child and is actually due any day now. And I had the privilege of sitting down with her and talking about bridging the gap from maiden to mother. A maiden is someone that does not have a child and a mother, of course, is someone that does have a child. And we thought it was an important topic to talk about and so you'll see why. And we also dive into other questions. We talk about some juicy stuff like pregnancy sex and sex after pregnancy. I got to ask her some questions from the perspective of becoming a new mom, just about things that I'm worried about in my pregnancy or common myths and misconceptions that I've heard as I've gone through my journey. She answers some of those and also ask me questions in part two, which you will be able to watch on her channel over at Phoenix Wild. I know you all are really going to enjoy this conversation, especially you mothers and pregnant mamas out there. And I can't wait to read your comments below and have you all join in on the conversation with Jordan and I. I love opening up dialogues around the things that we spoke about. Before I cut to our conversation really quickly, I wanna say thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with tons and tons of classes for you to help develop your creativity, or just really learn about almost anything. I took an online course in photography that helped me learn my camera and learn the basics really well, and now I am learning about video editing, and the course is called Transforming Footage into Evocative Travel, and it's taught by a wonderful film director and photographer named Oliver Astrolago. Taking this course has been helping me with my cinematography skills, learning how to make my vlogs and videos look a little bit more pleasing to the eye. If you watched the home tour that I just came out with before this video, you will see how I implemented some of the things I'm learning from this course and try to make the video look a lot more like a movie. Skillshare classes are affordable, they're built for real life application, and amongst all the topics like film and photography, video, music, entrepreneurship, business, web development, graphic design, you are sure to find at least, at least one course that you resonate with and that you are wanting to take. So graciously, Skillshare is offering all of my lovely Earth Mama Medicine family members a free two month premium membership to help you explore your creativity. And all you have to do is click the link below in the description and you'll get those two months for free. And then after that, it's looking at around $10 a month. It's way cheaper than taking any course that you would in real life. So let me know how it goes for you all. And without further ado, I bring you Jordan and bridging the gap from maiden to motherhood. Enjoy. This is a very, very special video today. I've never done something like this before. I'm not sure if you have either. This, this, this internet world yeah. Yeah. We are connected across the entire continent right now and ocean. I have the lovely Jordan from Phoenix Wild here. And I feel like we've been internet cousins for a while and we are finally speaking to each other face to face and it's so beautiful and serendipitous. The intention today is to talk about bridging the gap from maiden to mother. And I have a few questions for you because I'm on my way to that initiation. Let's talk about it. Thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to talk about is what I said. I want to know how your life shifted becoming a mother 
particularly your relationships, your relationships with your friends, especially your maiden friends, how that shifted, and and then also your relationship with your family. It's kind of hard to navigate because you don't know until you know. So you're a maiden, you're living your life, you get pregnant, and you go through the initiation, and then you're like, oh, okay, I didn't know this is this is what this was. And then what happens is you start to recommunicate with your family or friends or what have you, and you're a whole different person. And um, I think that it just gets really, it gets uncomfortable because there's a lot of assumptions um, as a maiden about what motherhood is like. And to be fair, you know, I, I remember feeling the same things or feeling the same, like, you know, even like seeing mothers out and about when they enjoy their dinner with their husbands and the kids acting crazy. <laughs> and you're like, oh, they, they need to get their kids. Like, why would you bring your, your, your little toddler out here if you can't control them? Totally. But now being a mother, I had no idea. The toddlers are just crazy. Like, <laughs> all, all toddlers are just, that's, that's, that's how they are. You know, it has nothing to do with anything that the parent is doing or what type of parent they are. Like, toddlers are just so, like, it's beautiful, and they're the gurus, they're the teachers, of, you know, but it's like, they're unpredictable. It has nothing to do with what you think it is, but it's hard to explain this to maidens who haven't transitioned. It's nothing that I could say, you know, to my friends to be like, well, uh, you know, I don't know what to tell you until you know, and then they feel like, you know, that separation, because it's like, the mothers are kind of like pushing you out of the club type thing and that's not what it is it's just and i'm gonna say it is what it is but it's yeah. it's all about both sides having compassion and that's where you know we have to begin bridging the gap because maidens just have to have compassion that they don't know and Absolutely. that is enough for mothers to be like thank you you know because we don't get a rule book for parenting. I know you're, you still consider yourself a maiden. I consider you a mother right now because you're, you're, you're incubating. Yeah, your baby's here. You know, I'm not a mother of three in the physical yet, but you know, I, I have three children. You know, I, I'm taking care of this baby that's in my womb right now. You know, it dictates most of my day, has, has been for the past nine months. So. I'm and I just want to say, I know you're not even exaggerating when you say toddlers are crazy because I just read something from somewhere. I don't remember what it was, but it was talking about how children don't even develop the part of their brains that can register logic until around age six and seven. Yeah. So they scientifically just, they have such big feelings and they cannot process them alone. Like they cannot... So if they're upset about not getting that French fry in the amount of time they wanted, they're going to scream at the top of their lungs. And like, that's just how they decided to deal with it because they don't know. Yeah. Oh, when I read that, that, that changed app. everything. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, I've totally been that maiden. Like, oh my God, please get this Me baby too. out of here yeah. you now. Please. Because we have this expectation of children that they should behave in a certain way. Yeah. And it's like remembering to go back into your childhood self, you know, even with that kind of thing, it's like, would I want to be that parent to myself as my three-year-old self to be like, you need to behave a certain way. It's like, it's not about that. It's about just, you know, even for the children, you have, we have to have the compassion for all of these phases of life yeah. because when you transition, you don't realize what was you know, before you or ahead of you, you know, you just transition and then, then you get the enlightenment and the same thing happens for children, you know, the same thing. Mm -hmm. Man. So do you have any particular experiences you can, you can remember that really made you feel that difference or, or that separation from your maid, from your maiden relationships and your mother, anything that sticks out to you? Yeah, I had um, a girl come and um, stay with us. This happened rather recently. She was rather obsessed with my mothering and, you know, just the presence of motherhood that I displayed. She's like, oh my God, you know, you're so amazing. La-di-doo-bee-da-bee-doo. I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> you, know, you know, thank you, obviously, but hello, I'm human. Um, yeah. You'll see, you know, and she began to live with us for a few months. And um, I remember Ayumi during the process that she was there, Ayumi was, she had four molars coming in. So I can't even imagine on her, you know, Ayumi's place, how painful that was for her. So Ayumi was crying a lot. She was crying about everything, throwing herself out. It just was like the worst phase of tantruming, to be honest. And this woman lived above us, this maiden lived above us. So she wasn't really interacting with us that much, but she could, I'm, you know, I'm sure it sounded crazy yeah. from upstairs with this toddler. And, you know, the way me and Antoine respond to crying is we're not going to like make her stop or yeah. even like, console her every time we just let her express what she needs to express most of the time especially if she's in pain like yeah. you know yeah, there's not much we can do yeah. yeah um but yeah so um it came time for her i guess this build up of all these feelings that she had about how we were treating our daughter and she just she came down one day just had a problem with us and was just like you know your baby has colic and it just erupted and she just your baby has colic if that we call defects right now like they would take your children away all you, all you do is let her cry and it was just like what in the you know well, off, like who, who are who are you you know and I, I i don't get i don't get hyped like that but you know i'm a mother like i'm i turned into mama bear and it was just like yo like Maiden, if you would have sat down and asked me, what's going on with your daughter? Oh. <laughs> well, number one, how can I help you? Yeah. How can I help you? Yeah. Instead of just being judgmental based on what you think is supposed to go. Children cry. That's Absolutely. what they do. You know, so that, that really, really hurt me and Antoine because, I mean, we, you know, it's, it, you start to do the blame game too, be like, ugh, like, could we be helping her more, you know? But it's like, and then she was saying things like, oh, I thought you were a good mother. I'll be a better mother than you when I grow up. All of these just, just terrible things, you know? And I feel like so sad for her having to express herself that way, but it's gonna bite her in the ass, yeah, you know, when she becomes that. a mother. And that's all I can take away from it is that she's gonna remember, she's gonna remember me. Yeah. And she's going to, then she's going to find the compassion. But it's just like, it's one of those things where it's like, it sucks because I wish she didn't have to go through that judgment and we're separated now, you know, we, you know, we're not friends anymore. And yeah, you know, yeah, it just, that's it heavy. Sucks. Yeah, it was, oh, yeah. it was really hard. I was, it was during this pregnancy too. It was, I think that should be a rule for everyone, not, I mean, not even maidens, every single person in the world, you see a mother struggling, the first thing that is allowed to come out of your mouth is, can I help you? Is there any yes. way I can help you? I, a friend of mine, Alex, was saying that um, her child was having a tantrum in the grocery store and she's like right at the end, just trying to check out, there's stuff falling on the floor, there's bags, she's trying to get out of the grocery store in one piece. And someone just came up to her and was like, hey, could I carry a couple of bags for you? And she said she felt like crying. Because yes. it was like, yes, yes, you can carry these bags. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you can carry these bags. And it was a fellow mother who was yeah. like, I got you. I got these bags. You hold the baby. We good. And that, yeah. that's all you needed instead of looking at her like, oh, my God. Yes. Especially coming from the household I did where we got spanked 24-7. Like, we got our asses beat. <laughs> So yeah. I grew up looking at kids like that kid needs an ass whooping. Hit that kid, yeah. hit that kid, hit that kid, you know. Now I'm completely on the opposite side, but um yeah. What a <laughs> what a journey, right? What about your family? How'd that shift go? Yeah, um, I think with my family, um, the shift was their expectations of me. Uh, which caused them to kind of stiff arm me a little bit more. Whereas yeah. before the children came, it was more like, well, let's help, you know, let's assist you with your life and la, 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 la. But it's, um, from my side of family, I mean, not necessarily Antoine's, it just was a more of a pushing out the door thing. And like, well, you got kids and you, you keep having them. 
Wow. So good luck, you know, type of thing. Yeah, my, my, my family is very, very unique in their love language. Hard love, tough love, do it yourself, you know, prove that you're worthy type of love. And I understand that that is the way that they express their love, even if, you know, in an ideal world, I would love my parents to, you know, be flying to Hawaii and, you know, <laughs> sending my kids things and really interacting with us. But yeah, it's really, it's kind of um, been difficult for my parents to really interact to, with my parenting and they're not a fan of my Instagram or any of my social media. It's always been like, they're just like this question mark about me ever since I came into this planet. Like, what, what, what are you doing, Jordan? It's definitely something that I came to accept, but I definitely have felt more of the stiff arm once my children have came because it's like they don't want me to reach out to them for uh, because that'll, I don't know, some way show that they're, they have failed or anything like that. Me out here doing it myself for them, it's like, oh, she's doing a thing, you know, so interesting that's very yeah. interesting but that I, it's beautiful that you recognize that that's their way of parenting and i love them and they're still parents at the end of the day i told my mom yeah. all the time like wow yeah. you had you parented through so many phases of infanthood and through my teenage years and you're still yeah. learning how to parent a 26 year old now i mean yeah. i don't need you like that anymore but it's still a journey this is the first time you've parented yeah. a 26 year old and a 23 year old and an 18 year old you've never done that before and it's yeah. you're still learning and they only get that one that one round <laughs> so yeah. that's yeah. yeah i think during the older phases of your child being an adult you have more opportunities to take space i think it's a lot more self-introspection like I feel like me and my family are going to come together more like maybe in my 30s you know type thing you know that seems like separation but for me it's just like just a different phase like you were saying I think that's really big of you to recognize it that way taking a while all these <laughs> back-to-back pregnancies has helped me with the spiritual work but yeah oh I bet man the spiritual work the initiation I've already feeling now my baby telling me to sit down somewhere a lot yeah. day. like just stop just relax 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 this capitalistic patriarchal world has us feeling like we constantly have to be working we constantly have to be striving for something and this is the first time in my life i've been like taking naps i never was taking naps before i became pregnant even if i was exhausted but now it's like, you have, you have to, you have to. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to the guru. Listen, yes. <laughs> okay, so that was like the, the meaty stuff. I do oh, want to ask you some, some other stuff that's like a little bit more selfish, but <laughs> I'm sure everybody will benefit. Everybody's going to pull something from this. Yeah. <laughs> so... I want to ask you this about breastfeeding. I have very, very old fashioned family members. I mean, super duper. I wonder, I see now when I go to Thanksgiving and my granny's there and everybody's there and my cousin, my older cousin is there with her baby and she's about to go breastfeed. She gets up from her, the family discussion and goes to like another room to breastfeed to be more polite. Or if she has to stay around someone, she'll wear a big something over her and the baby. And I'm thinking like, wow, what will it be like to pop my boob out in front of my dad or my brother, who I'm very close to them. I see them almost every day. Well, like, obviously that's going to be my own experience, but what do you have to say about moving past it not being sexual? I know it's not sexual, but when you're in front of people like your dad, it's like, you've never seen my breast. And I don't know if I want you to see my breast. I think it's definitely just how you're explaining it. It it it's it's awkward when it's around people who you know aren't on the level of understanding that you are. But also, I mean, when you're breastfeeding, you know, boobs coming out all the time. It's not yeah. something that's like this scheduled thing that it feels like it may be. It's like whenever, you know. So sometimes you're not even gonna be thinking about it. But I feel like for me, when I went home and I would breastfeed my mom, like the first time, like I didn't even think about it, but I whipped my titty out, 
my dad was there and she was there and uh she was like go in the room what are you doing your dad and i'm just like you know like uh, oh 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 okay you know like but it was only because of her reaction that i started to feel uncomfortable and it started to be like, you know, I was about to do the whole, let me make a statement yeah. for all women and be like, <laughs> listen, I'm about to feed my baby. But then it was like, okay, dad, I, you know, this is kind of awkward. Let me just, yeah, you know, so it's just like when I, same thing too. When I go home, I just, you know, if I need to breastfeed, I leave. And honestly, my, my family, they just all these comments anyway. So it's like, I'd rather not be around that they always oh you, oh they still breastfeeding get that baby some chicken uh blah, blah blah you know it's like always like what you know like i can't have peace to just breastfeed there anyways oh but yeah i think that um it's easier to do the the no shame type of breastfeeding when you're out in public honestly I when you don't know sam and sam may be looking at you crazy but you like sam i don't i don't know you my baby yeah. needs to eat. Like yeah. I don't have, you know, I don't have, I don't have an explanation for you because I don't know you, <laughs> you yeah. know. But yeah. exactly. with your family, you know, it's probably gonna make you more comfortable to just go ahead in the other room, you know. Yeah. They know who you are and your values, anyways. But yeah, it's so. I don't know why I giggled like a little kid thinking about it, but I, I <laughs> definitely feel like that dad brother boundary is gonna be real, and I'll just yeah. have to pick one for the team because yeah. I'm the same way I do want to be like but for women <laughs> yeah. but there's like you know there's some points that you just don't it's okay it's all right <laughs> yeah the argument isn't necessary <laughs> another question juicy juicy question everyone is telling me that co-sleeping is not gonna work and of course there's many different reasons you're gonna roll over on your baby which the maiden in me is like how the hell would you roll on your baby how strange how do you like sleeper? Strange. i wake up when the cat meows like what right but then i also have heard horror stories where you are so sleep deprived to where you just conk out and bad things happen i still don't understand it and i, I can't speak from first hand experience until i can but i definitely have family members who are afraid of that and i have family members who are just saying you shouldn't co-sleep because you're not going to get that baby out of your bed until they're like eight years old because they're going to be attached to it. And then you're just never, <laughs> and you're, <laughs> and, um, and then your sex life will suffer and your relationship will suffer because you just will never get the kids out of the bed. Speak on that, please. Oh, here we go. This is like my favorite topic. I actually just did a video on sex and pregnancy. I saw it. It was good. Matt and I watched it together. It's so real. And it's like so many people are dealing with this and not talking about it. But it's like the most important thing. I mean, sex creates the baby, you know, first and foremost. You know, it's mom's 50%, dad's 50%. You know, it's it's a collaboration and the needs fluctuate throughout the entire process. No, nothing is linear about it. Yeah. Um, and in terms of co-sleeping, when you get your baby, that baby is the best smelling, yeah. the coziest, the softest, sweetest thing. And to deny yourself from sleeping with your baby every night because of a superstition is pretty strange for me, mm -hmm. you know? Definitely mothers who are able to put their baby in a crib in another room, it's definitely not easy for them. Like anyone that you're, you know, any mother that you ask, it's not an easy thing to do that. Yeah, they may get more sleep, but they're gonna be awake in another way. Like in motherhood, you, the sleep just, it just stops. Even when your kids are teenagers. You know, I used to be so annoyed. My mom would be like, you know, I, I was going out and she'd be like, you need to come home, da da da, or I'm not gonna go, be able to go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? I didn't understand yeah. that. But now I'm like, oh, I get it. Like, when your child is, you know, you're just, you're just more alert. Yeah. I will say something funny. I feel like dads, maybe, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I gotta like, when I'm co sleeping with my newborn, like, we have a little, um, like, little, baby bop thing now yeah. but i mean antoine he i mean dads get the best sleep so <laughs> anything 
if there's any fear about anybody rolling on the baby is dad but mom is there you know like when the co-sleeping happens when the baby's so little the baby's sleeping with me more because Antoine yeah. when he sleeps he just yeah. oh but that's the cuteness of dads that's why you see all these dad pictures with the baby sleeping because oh all right give me my baby over <laughs> <laughs> my baby but yeah no it's like you're 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 alert you're not gonna let that happen you're not yeah. you're not it's really not something instinctual it's strange to expect that from a mother and sleep deprived or not you will lift up a freaking car for your child if you have one hour of sleep it doesn't like come on you know the state may be a maiden saying that like i heard that you don't you know get any sex because you know it's like it's just not it's just not true um okay so as far as the sex thing i would say that co-sleeping is not a hundred percent why you might not be having sex during pregnancy or postpartum or when your child is three because children can be moved you know it gets creative it doesn't have anything to do with the baby sleeping in your bed because when the baby sleep wherever it is yeah if you need to get it in you (laughs) gonna figure it out yeah you know it may be easier for baby to be sleeping in your bed so y'all can somewhere else (laughs) you know so it's like not specifically about the co-sleeping that has anything to do with having sex or not the exhaustion the hormones the frazzled mind the disinterest because your body's so new and so different you know and changing those are the things that have to do with sex not happening it's not the co-sleeping and yeah that's what i was talking about in my video just the sensitivity that needs to happen because there's this expectation that sex happens a lot during pregnancy and then once you get that body back it's like all this going back stuff so yeah. like once you get that body back then you're going to be able to have sex and do all this stuff and it's like there is no going back you're new no going back. Yeah. yeah and it gets frustrating i'm sure for the man to have this expectation because of society telling him he should be getting sex and all of this, even more so because, you know, he has a kid and all these things now. And it's just like, it's not fair to assume that because the people who are having a lot of sex, they are they are getting more sleep, but they're having a different experience. Yeah. Their babies may be um, not breastfeeding all the time. They may not be sleeping in the same room as them. They may have like nanny help, you know, all yeah. of these different things that factor into having more space to even get into that that frame of of mind um i mean i keep telling Antoine he's he's slowly getting it he gets it but he don't like hearing it you know like when our kids are you know like you said when they're like six and seven that's a different phase they're not going to be all up on me they're they're going to be able to wipe their butts they're going to be able to get up and make me some breakfast (laughs) yeah you know like that's a different phase and sex will happen a lot more a lot more intense and passionate right now it's like we just get it in when we have time yeah you know or the kids are asleep or You know, it's like those phases and you have to respect the phases and not expect. It's was like, well, you you fooled me when we we first got together. And but well, I was a different girl then. Like it's that's not me. It's not me. I'm I didn't know I was gonna be here. Yeah. Here I am. (laughs) This is the reality. Yeah. And, you know, like my heart goes out. I have so much compassion for Antoine and for these guys who are just like, I just want to, you know, I just want it to be the way it was. It's like, you know, that's the maidenhood for even the men. I don't even know what to call. It's funny that guys don't like. Do guys have like a word for yeah. their? I have no idea. I feel like, like bachelor, but yeah, I was about to say bachelor is like they the the single younger man, but I have no idea. Yeah, it's interesting that we don't even have the respect for guys to allow them to have that transition before they become fathers, you know? So it's all stripped from these guys and they're really left with all these expectations and don't really even get to interact with 
the the birth flow and the pregnancy flow as organically as they can so man i have just so much compassion for them you know yeah, it's about like speaking and just letting them know and you know a lot of relationships suffer because they just stop talking about it and god just thinks that he's being rejected or he's not seen or not loved and the woman is feeling the same way you know so I loved your pregnancy sex video. I'm happy that Matt happened to be home then when I turned it on because it did spark a lot of conversation. We found ourselves like pausing it and talking about what you were talking about and talking about it after. And yeah. I was like, oh, I feel weight lifted off because you're so right. All of my like pregnancy apps. And I mean, I, I do feel like everyone I follow on Instagram who's pregnant is talking about like, sex is great. Sex is great. I'm having a lot of sex. And no one, I, had, I hadn't heard of anybody until your video be real about what it's like on the other side. And also your, your comparisons to animals. I never even thought about that. It's so true. Yeah. No animal. I've never ever seen a pregnant animal that's like, let me get some. They're like, don't come around me. Don't touch don't, me. Yeah. They will anything that God like goes life. away, it's not even there. <laughs> yeah. While she does yeah, the whole pregnancy. So. Yeah such a great video i'm glad that you spoke on that and i hope that video like spreads far and wide because that's the pop that that opinion needs to become more popular that experience yeah yeah, yeah. and it's not just me that's going through it you know just acknowledging all all that you know is pregnancy it's so, so vast and so wide so many of us women are going through it and yeah, you know, my moms d didn't talk like this. They didn't have freaking Zoom to, like, connect like this. Why are you talking? Oh, I'm talking to Auntie right here. Yeah. <sighs> okay, you know what? That's the end of my questions. I couldn't even think about anything else to ask you. I bet you throughout this pregnancy, I'm going to think of things to ask you, but where I am right now, I'm feeling just... I, I guess I have, like, maybe, like, a few things to ask you. Just, I mean, I, I do, I consider you, like half maiden, half mother, you know, because you are still in the realm of the unknown, but you are experiencing motherhood in the, the, the very early like, stages. Um, what things like changed for you now that you became pregnant? Like what things are you like more sensitive about motherhood that you didn't even think about before? Oh my God, so many things. 